was clear this was banner day at Synergy Field. Most featured a little rhyme. Step down, Mike Brown. Mike Brown makes us frown. Or this one's going up, Mike Brown, flush it down. It's getting nasty. Some put it in prayerful form, deliver us from this evil. Some were in holiday form, all I want for Christmas is a win. And some were in cyber form, www.sorrybeatteam.com. As usual, they were all in better form than the Bengals. Come on, Bengals, baby, one time, baby, one time. The Bengals, who haven't won since October, didn't provide much encouragement. On the Bills' first play from scrimmage, Doug Flutie hit Eric Moulds, who had run past Ashley Ambrose. 55 yards, the Bills were at the 11. We wanted to be aggressive. I mean, we didn't want to come out and just play and, you know, let, try to let them make mistakes and, and beat themselves. It took them three more plays, all runs to get it in. Antoine Smith did each one 7-0 Bills. Offensively, this is how things started for the Bengals. Ted Washington slid between Mike Goff and Derek Brills to drop Neil O'Donnell. A 20-yard field goal finished another Bills drive. They led at the end of a quarter 10-0. One fan urged the Bengals to get rid of both the offense and the defense at this point. Also noteworthy was that Neil O'Donnell came off the field seemingly bothered by a hand injury. But early in the second quarter, the defense made a couple of plays happen. First, slippery Doug Flutie was smacked for a loss by rookie Brian Simmons. Then this. Second down, 15 at the 15. Bengals trying to make him cough it up now and get the ball in pretty good scoring position if that happens. Here comes Takeo Spikes. And oh. he unloads, and there's a pickoff at the 15-yard line. Simmons down to the 10, to the 5, to the 3. Flutie, Flutie was thinking the slant. And uh, I cut off the inside, and the other guy, I think he kind of changed the route and, and, and tried to go out. You know, he tried to come in and then press back out. And, uh, and Flutie was thinking of slant and threw it right to me. The Bengals took one play to move back on a penalty. But on the next play, O'Donnell hit Darnay Scott in the right corner of the end zone. The Bengals had six. They didn't get seven because the point after snap, skim pass Lee Johnson. Uh, he's just a bullet snap and a little low and just didn't have my hands there. Despite that flub, the Bengals picked up some steam. Watch Flutie go to pass, and then when he looked to get away, he ran smack dab into Renard Wilson. Getting the ball back, O'Donnell passes to Pickens into Bill's territory. Two plays later, he waited until Pickens broke into the clear, and Carl was able to carry down to the eight-yard line. The Bengals moved to the three. That's when O'Donnell hit Pickens, cutting across the goal line. The ball's knocked loose, but they ruled he had crossed the plane. Something to shout about. The Bengals had a 13-10 lead. Not that all was forgiven. Some creative soul deftly dropped a protest sign right in front of Mike Brown's box. The crafty culprit was never discovered. With about three minutes to go in the half, another big play for the Bengals. Flutie and Moulds were again moving the ball at the stage. But from the 30, Flutie went to throw, then scramble, but the Bengals got him cornered. He decided to throw, but he fluttered a pass to the right, right into the arms of Adrian Ross. So I just started to drop, and I just saw the, uh, the uh, one guy open, and I just tried to get to him as fast as I could. And, um, you know, I guess I got lucky, and he floated it out there. I just tried to go ahead and step in front, and I got the pick. So with three minutes left, the Bengals had the ball in a three-point lead. But within a minute, they gave the ball back up. That hurt, but the next play was even more painful. Second and 15, Flutie hit Moulds on the run. Past Myron Bell, past Greg Myers, past Dartrell Hawkins, past Ashley Ambrose. Moulds completed a 70-yard touchdown play. Uh, the one thing that's hurting us right now is, is the big plays. You know, we're giving up big plays, and, and that'll kill you in this league. The Bengals had given up the big play, and soon they would give up the ball. The Bengals moved backwards on another third down play. That allowed the Bills to get the ball in the final minute, and gave Steve Christie the chance to kick a 53-yard field goal, which he did. The Bills led by seven. The fans were urged to walk out, and the Bengals were again starting to look like Larry Curley and Mike. Nyah, nyah. When the second half kicked off, some fans left, but not too many. Others produced more banners. Can't draft, can't coach, can't win. When we got to the third quarter, which was nothing more than the Bills kicking two more field goals, and with the Bengals working to keep Bruce Smith out of the backfield, other guys like Sam Rogers got there instead. When you do that, when you overcompensate like that, the other guys have to hold up, and we didn't. The Bengals did move the ball at the end of the third quarter, but as the final period started, Thomas Smith ripped a pass away from Carl Pickens. It landed in the hands of Sam Cowart, who ran the ball back to the 40. The Bills moved into Bengals territory. Then watch this. Flutie's back, slips left, steps up, 
and then throws to Molds, who could have held up a banner saying, I'm open. 33-13, this was a runaway. And you didn't need to have somebody tell you to leave. You just did it without hesitation. Now some stayed to get into fist fights. Others stayed to taunt. Look at this Buffalo fan dancing and making sure the fans around him knew the Bills were up by 20 points. Cop showed up and he says, hey, I didn't do anything, just minding my own business. But the cop bounces him anyway. And then this guy starts going up the steps and doing it again. Hope this guy tries the same thing in Pittsburgh or Cleveland. Jeff Blake replaced the injured O'Donnell in the fourth quarter and he got a dose of the Buffalo rush. Pat Williams ate up Anthony Brown on this play. Late in the game, the Bengals did make a couple of plays. First, Adrian Ross deflected a flutie pass. John Copeland makes the grab at the Bills' 25-yard line. That led to a touchdown. Corey Dillon went in from the three, and the score was settled. 33-20 in favor of the Bills. Yep, some fans said they want their money back. Others said no changes, no COAs. Meanwhile, the hometown misery continues. Somebody asked Lee Johnson if anything can be done to stop the bleeding. Oh, I think that uh, I think the bleed's probably it's going to toughest out the bleeding right now. Just you know, the season's already pretty much we bled to death already.